Welcome back to Visual Bucket 4.7.0 Tutorials, yay! Today we're going to go over merchant trades and we're going to actually build this, this column right here. And I'm going to show you all how to get custom trades out of villagers and just how to pull up custom trades. Alright, so let's just get right into it. So instead of taking this one that I have already built, we're going to build it from scratch. So we're going to make a new plugin component command and this command is going to be slash trading there we go and this is going to be for the new merchant recipe that we are about to make so over here i've already typed in searching merchant and these are all the things we're going to end up using but first we need local variables so i was told to start using local variables more and it's helped a lot so first we're going to set local variable first we need a new trader so we're just going to call this guy the trader and he is going to be a merchant and we're going to go bucket create merchant so then the type title of this merchant we're just gonna call him the same thing he is the trader so now what we're gonna need is another local variable this local variable is going to be the first recipe that we want the trader to trade us so we're just gonna call this result one so then for result one we're going to add the value new merchant recipe right here so in this new merch in this new merchant recipe we're going to come over to these three dots and lines and we're going to actually go down to item stack number number boolean so the result of result one let's just say we want a new item oh we're going to do a new named item so this new named item we're going to just give us like an axe so we're going to give us a diamond axe with the name my trader is awesome perfect so now what this uses is is how many times we'll be able to trade per round with this merchant so first uses we're going to just add in so uh, we can only get two diamond axes each time we come up to it. so then max uses you know what instead of doing these three dots let's just make it a lot easier for us and we're going to come and just do item stack and number so let me redo all of this so now we get to go into the fun stuff. We're gonna come over to the block selectors and we're gonna go merchant, add ingredient. So what this is actually doing is we're going to take the merchant recipe, which this, our result one, is our merchant recipe, and we're going to say what ingredient you have to have in order to get the diamond axe. So the merchant recipe is a local variable, result one, and let's just say that you have to have a piece of dirt. So we're gonna go new item stack, material of dirt. So when you give one dirt, you get a diamond axe. The next thing we need to do is we need to actually set the recipes. And I always do recipes with the S, so that way we can always add more onto it if we wanted to. So here it's asking for the merchant. What merchant is it? It's the trader that we created before, the local variable of trader, and the lists. We're gonna go a new list. And for the first object, we're going to add local variable result one. So let's go do that. Local variable result one. So now, all we have to do is open up the merchant. So now we come to open merchant. We're gonna come over to the three little dots and we're going to make sure that we're on merchant and not on villager. Human entity is us, so the command sender. The merchant is the local variable trader. And force, we're gonna right click on force. We're gonna say insert a boolean and just say yes. So that way we can trade with them yes. <laughs> and that's pretty much it to build your own custom merchant recipe. Recipes. So let's go build it and see what happens. So before we actually build it, I was told that using slash reload confirm inside of the Minecraft server is actually a really, really bad idea and it can create lots of bugs. So we're going to actually use visual bucket in order to reload it instead of us reloading it ourselves. Plugging components. We're gonna go add another command, and this command is gonna be called correct because we want to do the correct way of reloading stuff. And you can actually come over here and you can say bucket reload, and now it will reload the server every time that we type slash correct. Let's go build this and get it into our server correctly and safely. All right, so now that I have loaded into my Minecraft world the correct way by restarting the server, every time that we just go slash correct it reloads the server for us and we don't have all of those problems that we were originally having all right so if we did this right we should be able to go to slash trading and when we go slash trading it opens up 
If we do one dirt, it gives us an axe called This Axe is Awesome. That's great. Let's check it out. Let's, let's try it out real quick. Slash trading. We give them dirt and we can get one, two axes maximum is the maximum amount of axage that we can get. And perfect. That's exactly what we wanted. So we were able to customize this and customize this. Trader is the name of the trader. So we're going to go back into Visual Bucket and I'll show you all how to add more so that we can have more tiers of this. Okay, so now that we're back in Visual Bucket, we can go back into trading. If we wanted to add another result, I wanted to add another recipe, I would just copy and then say paste after, and instead of result one, change it to result two. Instead of a diamond X, we're going to actually change it to be a new item stack. So you can see when we go over here to the three dots, we can actually say material and number and be able to get material like golden carrots. And we can actually set an amount so we can have it give us five golden carrots for every whatever ingredient we want to add next. So let's add the ingredient next. Copy the first result for the ingredient, paste it afterwards, and we're going to change result one to result two. And we're going to do the same thing here, but this time we're going to do, uh, let's say, a new item stack with amount stone, stone down here, stone. And we're going to say that you have to have at least five stone in order to trade. Last thing we need to do is we need to set the recipes. So we have object result one here. We need to add another object. We're going to replace it with local variable result two, and we're good to go. We can build it and then go check it out. So now we can actually use our slash correct way of doing stuff to reload the plugin instead of, you know, everyone like, yeah, 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 yeah. All right, so now let's do it again. We can go slash trading and when we click on it for five stone it'll give us five golden carrots and just like the axe is still the same all right let's let's get some stone i love that stone is right here at the top all right so let's go to slash trading again and for five stone we can get 10 golden carrots we can trade twice and we could have changed that trade to whatever we wanted to do so this this kind of merchant stuff is really useful for well, let's actually change the time set and day and all that stuff real quick so this merchant stuff is actually really useful for people that want to have customized items like we were making you know custom crafts and i'm actually going to go put on a custom craft real quick to show y'all hey this is what this is a good use for merchant trading so let me go do that real fast Um, let me go make sure I made that right. Guys, when you're, when you're doing variables, make sure that you, you check and double check before you like completely rebuild it a second time because the thing I thought was wrong was not even wrong. And I ended up rebuilding the exact same thing and then it still didn't work. And so finally, I think I got it. So when you surround a clock with dirt you get this thing called an op clock and it says this is a true oh it's supposed to be trading clock this is a we're gonna call that trading clock so now whenever you come over and you use the trading clock it actually takes it out of your inventory and opens up this trades that we were talking about and that's it i mean the now now you can trade with this stuff so you can use this in any manhunt twist or even on your server for when someone actually creates an item, they'd be able to craft, they'd be able to buy stuff or trade stuff with these crafting items. So then you can also use the custom crafting items inside of the trades, but you can do just whatever you want at this point. So thank you. Shameless self-promoting time. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, please consider liking and subscribing. These videos are getting easier, just with more practice. It's being a lot of fun. And if you enjoyed, thank you. All right. Bye.